Guys, what's up? Um, I'm Thing One, and this video is going to mostly be an informational video. It's going to just be a lot of information, really. I'll show one gameplay. It's not really going to be anything crazy. It's just going to be a PvP game. Uh, I'm not really trying to show off, like, skill, but mostly going to use the match just to kind of explain gameplay and uh, thought process while playing, but I'm going to try and break down the jungle role for you um, and give you an idea of how the role is actually supposed to play and how understanding this role is actually probably the most important role to understand in the whole game. Even if you don't play jungle, this video will be extremely useful for you because if you understand how a jungler thinks, then you will understand what a jungler is going to do. It's it's so funny. Like in games, uh, sometimes my second favorite role to play is mid. Um, I'll be playing mid and one of my buddies that I play with from time to time, he'll be top lane. And there's so many times in a game, I'd be like, hey bro, you need to back up. You're about to get ganked. There's no wards or anything. And then a few seconds later, um, the jungler will come and gank him and then he'll die. And then I'll just start bust up laughing and like start trolling him being like, dude, I told you you were about to be ganked. It's almost like I'm a jungler or something and I know what they're thinking. Um, so as you can see, I'm Grandmaster. Um, I'm pretty decent. I got about 206 games this season, 57% win rate. Um, 5.6 KDA. I participate in team fights basically 56% of the time, 750 gold a minute, about just under 18,000 damage per game. Um, and then don't tank that much and don't do too much turret damage uh, as well. Uh, just looking at my, my games, you can see I'm fairly uh, consistent in everything. Um, over 50% of my games, um, I'm either MVP S rating or an A. Um, and that, unfortunately, this game doesn't include SVPs because if it was SVPs, I'd probably have 60 to 70% of my games I'm in the highest rated player on the in the game or on the losing team. Um, so we're first just going to go into like a custom game and I'm going to kind of just break down the map for you a little bit um, and explain like how the game actually works. So... First, just with, with picking jungle champions, there's, you know, actually, I won't get into the importance of how to pick a jungle champion yet. I can do that, like, in a different video because, like, overall, most likely, most players are one or two tricks. They play one or two champions, um, so they can't really pick a champion based on what works for the situation. And I also don't really recommend learning tons of champions at the start until you've mastered the role and mastered the champ. Once you've mastered the role and the champ, then you can kind of move around. Uh, I'm just going to pick Lee Sin. Lee Sin is one of my better champions in the game as well, but just for mobility purposes, I'll kind of pick him to break the map down for you a little bit Your will, as well. Hands. So I'm going to explain how the early game goes and um, I'll use Lee Sin because he's an early game champion and he's a champion that a lot of um, people hate playing against uh, just because he's so strong, so mobile, does so much damage and he provides such great utility for teams uh, in the early game, but he falls off. And I'll explain uh, breaking down the map and what to do uh, in just all situations, kind Rift. of. So let me... Disable all these things real fast. Get rid of minions. Okay. Minions have spawned. Mess up a buttload of gold real fast. Mess up, up real fast. Excellent. And then just ignore this build for right now. I'm not really building anything in particular. I'm just clicking stuff. So first thing I always like to do. Um, if you're Lee Sin main and you don't know, always level up your S2 first. Uh, but first thing I always like to do as a jungler, there's, there's a couple things, okay? And this is my thought Extend process. I always senses. start with a pink ward, okay? And there's a couple things that I like to do. But the main thing that you want to do is put your pink right here, okay? This is the main thing as a jungler. Now, a lot of times what you'll see will happen is 
your um, jungler will put his ward right here. Okay, Engage. which isn't a terrible thing to do. Okay, it is a good thing, and I know why most people do it. They want to know if their blue is going to get invaded. But the truth of the matter is, you know, most of the time your blue is not going to get invaded, especially if you're at low elo because kids are too scared uh, to invade. And even if they do invade, typically what will happen is your enemy jungler, if they're starting blue, will actually start red this way over here. And almost 100% of the time, they're going to come this way right here. And if they hit this and they see your wards there and they clear it, they obviously, then you know, hey, there's a good chance my thing's going to get invaded. And then what you should do is ping to group. But even if they don't hit that and they walk this way, just by your pink being here, by them walking this way, you're going to get vision on them. So it's way more, gives you way more utility, okay? So by having the ward here, one, you're giving your mid laner a safety over here to protect him from ganks. And then that allows your mid laner to put a ward Engage. on this side of the map uh, to give protection. Today so it's just utilizing the jungle test. and allowing your team to get the most information possible, okay? Now, as far as what side of the map do you start on? Engage. Do you start over on blue or do you start over on red? It, it depends on the champion. It, it really depends on the champion. So as Elise Sin, just to kind of like give you an idea, what I would always do first here is I would start red, okay? I would start my red, and then I'd have two options that I would think of, okay? Now, if the bot lane over here... Whoops. What the heck is my map doing? There we go. If this lane over here, the dragon lane, is an aggressive lane... So, like, let's say this is a, um, a Caitlyn and a um, Lux, okay? Let's say it's a Caitlyn and a Lux versus, like, a Vayne and a Lulu. All right. Well, Caitlyn Lux technically early game should beat the Lulu Today and we'll the um, Vayne. So this is kind of what my thought process would be. Okay, Caitlyn Lux and then my mid lane. Let's say I have a really even matchup. It's um, let's say it's Ziggs versus Oriana. So they're both just going to poke from far away. They're not going to really do anything. Quiet, and then top lane, you have two tanks. Let's say it's a Yasuo. Or I'm not Yasuo. It's a, um, let's say a Shen and, um, who's another really tanky champ? A Malphite, okay? A Shen and a Malphite. So super tanky lane. So when the game starts, I'm looking at my lanes. What can I do? What's going to be my most Fine. probable Set. thing? I already have my ward thought process out, and I explained to you why I'm doing that. So my thought process right after that is, okay, what lanes are gankable? Now, mid is probably my second most gankable lane. Top is almost impossible because it's a Malphite. He's going to be almost and unkillable, and Shen does hardly wait. any damage. I might be able to get something here, but my chances are less. Where my biggest probability of a kill, and this is just the situation, is going to be down here. The Vayne Lulu, which would be on my team. Or, yeah, yeah, the Vayne Lulu Extend versus the Caitlyn Lux. Why now? The reason why this would be the most probable lane is because Caitlyn's an early game bully and so is Lux. So most likely what they're going to do is push the lane. So by seeing that, what I would do as soon as the Today game started is I would test. type to my bot lane, hey, let them push and I'm going to gank you right away. So that would be the first thing. Now, the next thing I didn't tell you that I would do after I drop that pink, as soon as I drop it, I would back immediately and switch my pink for a sweeper. Okay. That'd be the first thing I do. Then I come over here. I would clear this red. All right. After I clear this red, I would move over here and I clear the crumbs. Okay. This is based on this situation. Okay. When there's an early game matchup, which I know is going to push in this favor. So I clear these crumbs. And then as soon as this is cleared, you know, hopefully um, my team was smart enough to put a pink ward right here. So that way I would know if there's a ward right there. And then what I would do is I would come and gank. Now, what you see most kids do, I'm going to explain a pathing to you. Most kids, let's say there is a pink right here. Endless and let's say they're now pushed, okay? Engage. Let's say they're like uh, right here. Engage. And then your team's like your team's like right Engage. here. And let's say they're like right here. And they got them pushed up because it's an early game team. They're poking and everything. I know there's a pink right here and they can't get in. This is what most kids would do when ganking. They just do this right here. Just like this. Now, why is this a bad pathing? 
This is what makes a good jungler and a bad jungler, right here, what I'm explaining. And this is something that's so small, but kids don't seem to understand. So most kids would just come in just like this, okay, when they gank. Quiet steps. Now, the reason why this is bad is because it breaks your, um, your leverage and your angle. So when you come in like this, they see you far sooner. They see you far sooner, and they start to react. However, if you come in like this, it breaks Wait, vision, and then you come this way, it gives vision. Now, there are going to be times you need to just straight cut in, but majority of the time when I gank, I actually cut across and move in like this, okay? This right here makes a huge difference in the way that you gank Endless because when you come in this way, they can't see. But if, if they're right here fighting, if you walk in this way, they see you immediately as soon as you're right here. However, if you walk this way, you're out of vision. And the only way they see you is if they have a ward. And then what you need to do is you need to make sure you spam attack the second you walk through that bush. So that way their attention is off. And so like you want to be kind of almost watching. So this is how I would basically do this. I would basically be doing something like this. I'd be watching them as I go to start walking in as they attack. Why as they attack? Because as they attack, most people can't keep track of the mini map right here and the fight in front of them at the same time. And so by doing that, it allows me to go in. Now, if they're hard engaging, then yes, I'm going to go like this straight, just straight in. If they're soft engaging, then I'm going to move test. around the corner right around here. Okay. That's going to increase my odds of probability. Um, of getting it and then the other thing that you see a lot of players do like they're just going to immediately use their abilities they're going to boom 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 the second they get in there okay you want to a successful Five, gank isn't always about getting a kill even though it's best a lot of times as you go in you're trying to actually bait out the abilities okay so they're expecting you to use an ability so a lot of times i'll just walk right at them and i'm trying to get them to flash or something like that to use an ability Five, and six. um that's kind of like how I'll actually start it, okay? And that's how you like start a successful gank right off the bat, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's say it was my mid lane, okay? If it's my mid lane that I was gonna gank instead, uh, here, here's the thing that a lot of players do. They just immediately hit this. They don't pay attention to like right here on the mini map, what area it is. If you're gonna do this, you wanna be real careful if you're gonna gank the mid lane. If the mid laner hasn't done this, when you hit this, Try and hit it into a way where the mid laner doesn't see it, but it still clears. Today because the problem, be the thing is, test. if they're going to drop a ward, a lot of times what people do is they hit it and it actually notifies the mid laner that they saw it because the vision comes up over them. Most of the time, though, when they drop a ward, they're going to drop a ward right here, right here, or right here. If you hit this in a way, Wait, you a can hit this just this part right here and then just around this right before this corner and in here this way unless the mid laner is paying close attention he's probably not going to see it and then he won't get the visual notification over him that he's doing it okay so that's Endless trials away. and so basically it'd be red raptors and then straight into a gank and then once again i don't gank like this once again lots of players just come in and immediately gank like this I come over from the far end and then gank, okay? You know, and another thing, if you have time, another way you can gank from over here. Giving yourself a better angle always is going to increase. Now, this one's a little bit more risky coming this way because you get spotted by the tower, um, but it is possible. You can do that one if they're like super pushed up, Today but typically it's just easier and test. better to come right through this way as well and then once again when you go in you're not just trying to immediately go all go all in on them you're trying to bait out some of their abilities as you go in making them think that you're going to go in as well okay Endless trials await. um that's kind of like how i would approach um early game ganking okay uh if it's early game mid lane or early game bot lane, whichever lane you want to gank. Most of the time, you're not going to early gank top lane. Only time usually you're going to early Please, gank a top a lane minute. if it's like one of your friends usually, or it's like a really favorable matchup. And most people start red. So, you know, if it's a favorable matchup and you start on the red side, 
then I would probably try an early gank, gank it. Or if I know it's a win factor lane. So like as an example, let's say um, their bot lane is Kale and I have a, um, a Riven, okay? And let's say top lane started on the red side, then I would probably gank top lane early. The reason being is because I know if Riven doesn't get some kills on Kale early, then this game's over because Kale's going to hard carry the game late game. And I just do the exact same concept as I did with the bot lane. I, I gank the exact same way um, every single time. Um, that's kind of like the way that you do it. Now, let's say... And you basically use that same concept for every single uh, every single gank. Use that same concept for every single gank, and it's it's even the same thing over here. So like, when you're ganking on this side of the map, a lot of times what kids do, and I see it all the time, especially in low elo and even in high elo, kids just gank just like this. Your senses. You know, they come in just like this, just walking straight in, just like this, and the kids start to run. Okay. What's better to do is always gank, if you're on this side of the map and the map's facing like this, always gank from right here, just like this. This is Waste always better because you want to try and let them push first. Or once again, you're ganking from like this right here. Leverage, you want to leverage the lane in your favor, okay? Those, those are the big things. Now, that's that's what you do if you have like an early game champ just kind of explaining understand that now here here's the other thing this is where it also gets really big so let's look at this from a laner's perspective okay so if you know you have an early game jungler let's say like a lee sin and you're versing a lane you want to let your lane push so that way the lee sin can gank you early okay now let's like talk about time so it takes doesn't take super so you're probably i never really if i'm playing against an early game champion i probably drop my ward in the lane after like the second wave uh because by then that probably is enough time for a second wave or mid second wave by the end of the second wave or mid second wave because that gives enough time to where um the jungler should have finished his buff and one camp. So if it's an early game champion, I know now that I could potentially get ganked. What you see a lot of kids do is the second they get into lane, they immediately drop a ward. Now, if it's a pink, that's fine. But the reason why that's a bad it's idea while going against senses. a jungler is because the jungler isn't even going to be able to gank for like the first minute almost. So you're basically wasting that entire ward. But by realizing, hey, the jungler has to clear at minimum one camp. But if the jungler only clears one camp and ganks right away, the risk that that jungler is, is facing Waste if he doesn't get a kill a is enormous because he'll fall behind. And usually a jungler that's going to do that is going to be an early game jungler like a Lee Sin, like a Zin Zhao. And if they don't get an early kill and they're going against a later game jungler, the later game jungler knows, hey, just hard farm because he just missed a kill and now I'm going to be a level up ahead of him when the dragon fight comes um, because he just missed a whole... Uh, I'll have two cl camps cleared by the time he even gets back to lane just to start his second camp. Uh, he'll be basically finishing his third camp. Um, now, let's say set. I'm playing, like, a late-game champion. So, like, let's say I'm playing, like, Evelyn. All right? Now, if I'm playing a late-game champion, <clears throat> um, something like, let's say... E Evelyn's not really late-game, but she is. She's uh, early-mid-late. It's because... She's not super powerful Waste until level um, level level five when she gets her alt. She still can be really good, and um, I'm I'm a really good Evelyn. Um, I think I have like lifetime like a six or seven KDA on her, and I've been like top one hundred with her as well. I could be higher. I just don't like to play her all the time because she's kind of broken and easy I to play. I don't like playing easy champions really. If I'm playing an Evelyn though. A champion that I know I'm gonna do a larger clear, I am gonna clean this. So when do I when do I ward this? If I'm playing a champion that um, I know my clear is pivotal or pivotal pivotal for me Why being successful, sense. then I will ward this right here. 
if I'm playing a champ where it's not pivotal for me to have a full clear, then I won't. So a lot of times what I'll do, if I'm playing like, um, it depends how, if I'm playing a champion that like I can't gank to level five, I do a full clear. I'll start either Krugs, um, like if I'm Evelyn for an example, I'll just use Evelyn. I'll start Krugs, then go to red and work my way all the way around uh, from next to next to next to next. Today, the reason why I do that, okay, and once again, give you an understanding of why this is a good route um, for like a late game jungler, unless you're a mana, if you're a mana um, deprived champion, then yeah, you do basically blue, um, Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, Red, Krugs. But if you're not a mana deprived champion, then you would start this way and go this way. And the reason why you do that is because the red gives you extra damage to kill these guys faster. Okay? Uh, but if you if you need the mana to clear, then yeah, you would start this way. Okay, but now, the reason why, if you're playing a late game champion, I say go here, 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 and then here. Versus what a lot of people do is here, 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 skip here, and then straight to this. Um, or what they'll do is here, 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 here. Um, if you're a champion that's really dependent on your level 5 and you don't have strong early game, it's far safer to do what I'm telling you like this. And this risk-reward is so much better. So whether or not it takes you maybe a second longer or a couple seconds longer, it's better to do this way because of risk-reward. If your champion can easily get beat out by the enemy's jungler or your lanes can't beat the other lanes for sure, by doing this, clear right here, it will guarantee you level five and the chances of you being engaged on are far less. Quiet so tense. like if the enemy has a Lee Sin, a Zin Zhao, an Olaf, or some champion that you just don't like to fight early, it's better to do that full clear, especially if you don't have a champ that you feel like is good to engage anybody in their lanes, okay? Um, you would do the full clear just like that, okay? And then if maybe you're lucky, one of the camps would be ready. And then if they're not, what you basically do, after you do that full clear, you're probably either going to end up over here. You just assess which lane is more gankable. And you assess this while you're finishing your final clear. So while you're either over here finishing the clear or while you're over here finishing the clear. Before you finish, you need to assess this lane and this lane. This is the way you need to think. Okay. Is this lane pushed? So if I'm over here and I'm finishing Krugs and I let's say I'm playing a late game champion, I just cleared all this and I just cleared all this. And I'm right here finishing this. What I would be doing is I'd be looking at this lane. Okay, is my lane pushed or is my lane being pushed? And I'd look at the mid. Is my lane pushed or is my lane being pushed? If my lane my is pushed steps. on both sides, okay, then I have a couple other things I can do. I'd look at my health and I would look and see, okay, have I seen the jungler recently? If I have seen the jungler, there's a good chance I have, he'd probably be over here and um, possibly. If I did see him over here, Extend what I would immediately do is I'd scroll over here to see if he had his um, if he, if he had his blue buff. So I clear this, none of these lanes are gankable. So if I saw the jungler over here, what I would do is I would check to see if he had his blue buff by scrolling over and I'd check to see if this is here. If this is here, and he doesn't have his blue buff, I would Please come over here and try and steal the blue buff, but only because I have priority in this lane and this lane. So I know if I need help, they can come gank me, and I saw this guy over here. If I saw him over here, and um, I didn't have priority in both lanes, <clears throat> I may just take this. <clears throat> now, if I did the full clear, and he didn't do a full clear, and he just did two, three camps and tried to gank, I should be level five and he should only be about level three, maybe four at the max. Um, and let's say both lanes are even. Well, depending then on whether or not I'm gonna try and steal his blue would depend on, do I feel like my lanes are winning lane or not? And then also are my lanes stronger uh, early game or not? And then also based on what level I am, because I'm a higher rank than anybody in the game, am I strong enough to win that fight if I engage, okay? So that's kind of the way I would, I would think about it, okay? As, that's as like a late game champion.
All right, now let's scroll back to early game champion again. So you clear this, this, and you get ready for a gank because uh, typically everyone starts. Now let's say you're an early game champion and <clears throat> all your lanes are being pushed right away. W what do you do? So your lanes are pushed or your team, the enemy is holding back and letting the lanes push themselves because they know you're like a Lee Sin and they don't want to get ganked. So what do I do then? I can't gank right away, but I have to do something because I'm an early game champion. So I'm assessing this right away. As I'm clearing red, I'm watching these other lanes as I clear. Now, when do I do that? So the way I would explain that is like this. So I do this, and while I'm doing that, I do this. While things are on cooldown, I look as they're on cooldown. And I can use the cooldown as a buffer to sweep and just let the uh, guy naturally auto attack. And I can see. Now, if all the lanes are being pushed, I have, two, I have basically two things I can do. I can hope that their jungler shows on the map and shows somewhere on the opposite side. If so, if I want to be aggressive, I can go and try and invade their blue buff. Okay? And steal their, their blue buff. Now, the thing you have to once again be careful is, are you going to get invaded on? Now, if I feel like it's too risky, then what I'll do is just do a normal clear. Red, raptors, wolves, blue... Or what I'll do, if I'm like, no, I really gotta get a gank off, and the lane's kind of like in the middle for both, uh, let's say it's senses. not pushed back. Okay, so if, it, if they are both pushed back, then I'm just gonna do a normal clear. Red, Raptors, I'm gonna hit that, see if the guy just so happens to show. If he shows up top, then I'm gonna invade and steal his jungle right away. Because anytime the jungler shows on the opposite side of the map, you wanna try and punish him. If you can't Waste punish the team with a gank, you want to try and punish them by taking something away. What can you take away from them? You can take away the river scuttle, or you can take away their farm. Okay? Now, let's say that's X'd out. You can't do that play. All right? There's two other plays. One, you can do. You can either go right here and still farm this out and then farm this out. Um, and then you can just immediately go and do a normal clear. Blue, or wolves blue, and then reassess to see if anything's there. But let's say you just did both of these and both are in the middle. They're like right here, dance in the middle, right here, dance in the middle. It's and not really gankable, but you're looking at the momentum of the wave and the, your, the enemy has more minions than your guy. So you know his wave's going to naturally push or vice versa. So if I see more minions on this side of the enemy, then I'm going to push this way and I'm going to clear this right here and then hope by the time I clear that it's pushed if it's not once again i'm going to hit this check to see if there's any wards here i'm going to go this way i'm going to clear out the river scuttle and then by the time i clear out the river scuttle i'll see okay if it's pushed Today i'm going for the game if it's test. not pushed and it's still in the middle then i'm going to go straight down to my crubs okay unless once again i see the jungler show on the other side of the map if he shows on the other side of the map if the risk aversion is good i'm going to steal some of his camps all right and then once again, if it's all middle, middle, Extend then I'm just going to go straight senses. to my Krugs, okay? I'm going to do my Krugs real fast, and then I'm going to once again check everything. If, everything. if one of the lanes looks like they're pushing, then I'm going to go for the gank. Hopefully it's this lane, okay? If nothing's there, then I kind of have a decision. Okay, I have a little bit of gold. I could walk all the way over here, but I'm all the way down here. Um, I'm going to back and then I'm going to go rebuy. All right. And you can use that same concept right there. You probably have to rewatch what I just said there like several times to actually fully understand it. But you can actually use that same concept with every single ganking ability. Because what that does is it it completely opens up the map for how you gank. And then like I said, you just have to remember the ways I said to gank. You gank coming around. You gank through here. You hit the the, uh, the sweeper in this type of area. You ward here in that situation. You ward um, over there in that different situation. And Quiet the steps. concepts that I just gave you, they work on either side of the map, whether red starts bottom or red starts top. You just have to flip the map. And that's the best way of ganking. And then also, if you think like that, this is how high-level uh, junglers think, okay? This is how they think. This is how they um, view the map. 
if you think like that, it's like, okay, where would my jungle, the enemy jungler possibly be in this situation? And then you know how to react based on that information, okay? So that right there is just understanding the very basics of jungle pathing and um, how to gank properly as well. Um, and like I said, if I had like five bots, I could probably uh, break it down more and, and show it to you. But it's, it's a little more difficult when I'm just kind of like showing the map in general as well. Okay, so that's kind of like, because I feel like the early game is probably where most people struggle because most kids, I feel like if they get ahead early, they're pretty decent at knowing how to Please, push their lead. It's how do I move forward in the jungle properly? And those tips, like I said, they work throughout the whole game, basically, because you can use them throughout the entire game. Anytime that you're ganking, anytime during the lane phase, Today just swap those for test. whichever lane you gank, and that kind of helps. Um, actually, there was one side I didn't talk about ganking. So let's say you're ganking mid from this direction. Well, once again, yes, you are going to gank right through here, but a lot of times what I do is I actually gank from here. And the reason why I'll gank from this side um, of the map versus... Um, from up here versus on this side is obviously because you see where the tower is. It sees me. It's super obvious, but people don't think about stuff like this. So um, if I don't gank right here, sometimes I'll gank around this way Extend on this side. Senses. I do it a lot because once again, it gives me leverage. Um, but like I said, think about those concepts that I said about when and why you should clear. Now... Another thing I, I didn't really talk about, how do you know Endless when it's a game await. where you have to contest River Scuttles? So River Scuttles aren't super important because they don't give as much XP, but they do grant something that's insanely important, vision. So if you have a, a, a game, like for me, for example, if I have like a really... Um, a, a team that I know is going to rotate a ton and gain a ton. So, like, for example, a, um, a Lee Sin, a Zin Zhao, an Olaf, um, something I know that's going to, and they have, like, an Ari or a Zed. Um, these champions are going to rotate like crazy. And they're going to always try, or Katarina. If I'm versing those types of champions... I may put more priority on killing the river scuttles because of, even though it hurts me, depending on the champ that I am, you know, if I'm a, a good early game champion or mid game champion, then I don't mind fighting over a river scuttle. But depending on what type of champion I am, I may risk Quiet it steps. because of the whole That's team. Really it's, it's sometimes good to set yourself back as a jungler to help your lane. If it's, for the good of the game. So I may be willing to risk a fight over this Today in order to save them from being test. ganked by a Katarina or a, a Zed or an Ari from going down river. Because the truth of the matter is, typically if a mid laner is gonna gank either going down the river or the rivers, it's pretty rare Extend that they're gonna take the super long route and go all the way around. And even if they still go this way, they're still gonna get seen. So they have to go all the way this way through the lane and everything, which it makes the risk to reward ratio way less. So there's way less chance to do it. And most of the time, um, once somebody sees the river scuttle, there's a good chance they will just turn around because like, well, they know I'm coming. There's no point unless they're just like, they feel like the other enemy is just not paying attention at all. Then they may keep pushing. But then if you're not, if they're, if Please, you're not paying attention, that's on you. It's nobody else's fault but your own for not paying attention. Um, but that's kind of like, that's basic jungle pathing and understanding how to gank, when to gank, uh, what to look for in Find ganks, early game champs versus late game champs, if win condition lanes that have to be won, you know? Um, 
if you have a a team full of early game or like early game champions and they start losing but you have you know let's say a, a, high, a late game kale top then you know the only way you're going to win that game because your draven's losing and your ari's losing mid and you're lee sin but you have a kale top who's versing a i don't know who's a I'm trying to think of a, a top laner. Um, let's just say he's, he's versing a a Yasuo. I don't know why a Yasuo is top. Some people think Yasuo top would be a thing, but it's not. Um, you know the only way you're going to win that game is if that Kale gets fed. So you would direct more attention to ganking that Kale to help the Kale based on the win condition of the game. Um, and I feel like most of you would probably understand win conditions. What champion wins the game for you? What champion loses the game for you? Um, and then deferring that. Or maybe sometimes what it is, is the win condition actually isn't on your team. The win condition is um, on the enemy team. So, like, maybe for them a Malphite is their win condition. Like, if the Malphite isn't fed, there's no way they can win team fights because they need his ult to be a strong engage and they need him to be tanky to survive or, or they need him to just do a lot of damage in his ult in order to win the fight. Uh, but I know the rest of my team, based on our team comp, we can still win, um, but if that Malphite gets fed, it's over. So I may neglect Today everything I said and focus on ganking that one champion over and over and over again in order to keep him out of the game. Uh, kind of like I was telling you earlier, let's say if I had a Riven versus a Kale, I'm going to invest a lot of my resources, a lot of my time and energy on making sure that Kale starts the game 0-2, uh, 0-3, 0-4, 0-5. Um, so that way it takes a really long time for her to scale into the game and she doesn't end up being a factor because I know the rest of my team comp is strong enough to uh, win the game um, as long as she's never in the game. So thinking about those concepts, I said how to gank, and then the matchups are, like I said, a little harder to describe unless you actually see them in person. Um, but that's, that's pretty big. Um, so I'm going to go into a game. It's just going to be a PvP game. I said I'm not really trying to show off any... Uh, skill or oh look at this I just want to kind of like explain thought processes on stuff right now um, yesterday I was just kind of messing around so I'll just show a game where I was messing around let's see here um, but still has decent content so this would actually this would actually be a pretty Decent game that I could show. And it's actually a ranked game as well. I got MVP. Yeah, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show this one. Okay, so like everyone in, in this game is basically, um, you know, Masters, Grandmasters, Challenger, uh, whatnot. Welcome to Wild Rift. Because um, this is... Uh, Vanquisher 2 ELO. I'm Vanquisher 2, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. So let's pause this real quick. I want to explain my thought process, okay? Why did I pick Morgana? So obviously I'm a really good Morgana. You guys saw um, I'm top 50. Um, I'm, I'm actually ranked 23 with her, I believe. It was 23 or 24. I can't remember. I haven't, I haven't played... Uh, I haven't really looked, but I think I'm ranked number 23 or 24 on Morgana. Uh, but as I also play lots of champions, um, I'm, I play Lee Sin, I play Evelyn, I play Wukong, I play Graves, um, I play Morgana, um, I play, there's a couple other champions I play, but I'm kind of, uh, I play Riven. Why, why did I pick Morgana versus any of those other champions? That's the first thing I kind of want to talk about. So, there's a couple reasons I picked Morgana. One, 
the main reason I picked Morgana is my Morgana has been really good right now. I've been playing Morgana really, really well. So I always want to go with what I'm playing well, primarily. Second, I picked Morgana because I actually felt Morgana was the best pick this game. Why did I think Morgana was the best pick? I picked because one, they have a Yone, so I can negate his CC. They have a Xin Zhao, which I know in dragon fights, he's going to try and push me out, which I can negate that CC with my spell shield. And then they also have a Thresh, which Morgana is a hard counter to Thresh. And they have a Kennen, who's going to hard engage. I can spell shield myself and also negate his stun, but lock him up when he goes hard in. So in this game, I kind of looked at like, okay, Morgana's a really strong pick into this only if I get played, if I play it right and my team plays well around me. If my team doesn't play it well around me, I'm going to get blown up really fast. However, because, you know, this is uh, Vanquisher Elo, uh, high Vanquisher, like I said, I'm Vanquisher 2. And all the kids in here are Masters, Challenger, Grandmasters. I'm assuming these kids know how to play around a, um, a Morgana. So I'm assuming, though, even though if it's played correctly, Morgana wins this hard. But if it's not played correctly, Morgana loses this really hard. And because of our team comp, we actually lose the game really hard. Um, but... I'm also trusting the fact that, okay, we have a set. So I'm trusting him to either alt away the Xin Zhao or alt away the Kennen. And then we also have a Janna. So their team's heavy engage. Our team is more of like a protect comp. They have a heavy engage comp. So they have a really fighting comp. Protection comps beat fighting comps, okay? The reason is they can't do damage unless they get on top of us. But we have a Janna who can disengage. We have me who can help disengage. And then we also have a set who can help disengage. And then that allows basically us to poke and uh, do little bits of damage here and there. So that's kind of like what my thought process is. It's like, okay, this fights are going to be one around me spell shielding myself, spell shielding the fizz, and spell shielding the set. That's kind of my thought process. And then obviously, if I have to spell shield the uh, other champions, I will. But primarily, it's around those three champions. And then team fights are going to be one around Janna and me um, keeping people back and stopping them from being able to engage. And then the set stopping the Kennen from hard engaging or the Xin Zhao from hard engaging. And then me using my spell shield to block like thresh hooks and things like that. Um, that's how I think about this game. Just when it starts. How do we win this game? That's how we win this game. We have to play in this particular way. Okay? So, as you see, first thing I do, I'm clearing that. So, the reason why I'm, I'm putting it there is I'm going to do a full clear this game. And I'm actually going to switch to a sweeper as well. Um, but I'm going to do a full clear. The reason being is with Morgana, I have the fastest clear in the whole game. So, I and my ganks are pretty terrible until pretty early. So, I'm going to do a double clear. And this is how you do a double clear in case you don't know. Um, and while I'm doing this, the primary thing I'm kind of looking at is I'm looking around the map and trying to see where people are. Oh, and the other thing I'm doing here, so I actually rotate um, aggro. I put the aggro on uh, first the blue and then I wrote and I smite the blue but then I rotate the aggro over to the gromp so that way I'm basically clearing them at the exact same time for maximum speed and then the other thing you'll see is once I know they're going to die I start to walk away so that way there's enough time so that way they don't reset so as you can see I've cleared one side of my uh, blue while the other guys only cleared two camps this is how you do this other side by the way you Hit the with Morgana. You spell shoot or you uh, bind him, the red guy. Excuse me, you bind the red guy. Then you hit the raptors. You walk to the edge. You wait till they come, and then you um, step back over. There, I messed up. What I should have done is I should have switched my aggro over to the uh, other guy, and I did it. So 
When I play Morgana, my, my primary thought process is I have to hit level 5 as fast as possible. And I'm also, once again, trusting that my team realizes, like, hey, I'm Morgana, my ganks are trash, and I have to hit level 5 as fast as possible. So as you see right here, I asked him to come over here, help me secure this. He came over here and watched it, which is exactly what he's supposed to do. Not super looking to fight, but I have cleared now six camps and a gromp, and he's only cleared three camps. So pretty huge. Uh, right here, basically what my thought process is, okay, if this cannon hard engages, we can kill him because I'm level five. And the whole reason I actually walked down there into that bush was because I knew the cannon was full health and I knew that my set, if you see, was actually low health and I knew he was level five. So what my hope was while sitting there was like, okay, I'm going to back here because one, I know there's no vision there. Two, my set stayed at half health while the cannon was back at full health with alt up. I know that my set is like, okay, if this cannon hard engages on me, I can immediately pull him in and then use his shielding ability to shield himself, where then I can also go in where if I feel the set's going to die, I can spell shield the set, or if I feel like I need it, I can spell shield myself, and then if the cannon goes all in on him, he would have used everything to go in. I just walk in, pop my ult, it's a guaranteed kill on the cannon. We get him. Unfortunately, he didn't go in. I'm not going to spend a ton of time uh, sitting there. I'm just going to give it a couple seconds. And a lot of times what people do is they'll just sit there and wait and then they'll back. What I do in order to utilize time most efficiently, I'll back as I wait. And then if I feel something's about to happen, I'll stop backing. But if I don't feel anything's going to happen, I already have the back in place. So I'm utilizing my time the most efficiently. So after I back, the first thing I think is because I have everything clear. I know my blue side is going to spawn first. And um, there's, I could go back to bot because it looks like the cannon's going to engage, but it's, it's pointless. It's not, I'm going to walk all the way there, have nothing to clear. So the risk reward isn't worth it. So what I could do is go to the top where I know I'll have things spawning here soon, which puts me right around top and mid, which it looks like mid is starting to push. This gives me more options as far as what I can do. So this is my thought process. And see, he's pushing. So I'm actually trying to tell him like, hey, let's gank this. Let's gank this. So once again, come around side. I wait for him to go in. And I come in. I kind of messed up here. I waited a little too long. But luckily, he, did, he listened to me. But you see exactly how I did. When I came in, I came to the top. I pinged him. The Fizz did exactly what he was supposed to do. The Fizz hard engaged immediately. So remember in, earlier I was telling you, you want to let them hard engage because even if there was a ward here, I don't know if there was, um, but there was a ward here because he got ulted on, the Yone's not going to be paying as close attention to the minimap because his brain is immediately going to go to, okay, what do I need to do to outplay this Fizz? And his thought process is, I'm going to ult. So all his focus went on that, which allowed me to do a easy engage. I get the kill, but the Fizz, you know, really did most of the work right there. But that was all set up because I knew to go towards my blue side versus my bot lane, even though the bot lane was hard pushing. And as like I said, if you look at the bot lane right now, Kennen is pushed. I knew that was going to happen, but risk reward is better. Now this, I get a kill and I have camps up that I can clear and I have the river scuttle. Risk reward, understanding how to utilize the map and how to move around. So now my thought process is like, okay, let's get some vision. Let's continue to hard farm. You know, I'm looking at the map. I'm trying to say, okay, what rank is the enemy jungler? What rank am I? I'm a whole level ahead of him right now. So, and now I know exactly where it is because I just saw that. Since I had the river scuttle, I saw that thing go through and I know exactly where the jungler is. I know he's red side right now. Um, so... What I'm basically thinking like right now is I said, I'm focusing on my clear. I realize Dragon is going to be spawning here soon. So I want to kind of move around that. Um, here. Actually, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here. This was kind of a bad play. I don't know what the frick I was doing there. I don't know why I, I did. Because my alt's not up or anything. So. Enemy slain. 
I'm not sure what I was thinking. This was just a bad play by me in so many ways. Like, I, I could have definitely helped that uh, fizz out more. So that was just me making really bad plays all in general. I should not have pinged for a gank there. What I should have done is I should have just cleared my uh, wolves and then worked my way over to my red. Um, so I'm not really 100% sure what I did there. But yeah, what I should have done, instead of pinging for this gank, I should have just went straight to wolves and then come over this way and then possibly ganked from this way. But because I pinged in, one, I walked over ward. As soon as we saw the ward, we should have backed out. Um, but we both kept going in. Then I started to run away. I thought the Fizz was going to run away with me, but he didn't. For some reason, he went back in. I could have gone this way and tried to hit a binding to save Fizz, or at least maybe a spell shield. Um, realistically, the Fizz should have ran away with me, but he didn't. Uh, he shouldn't have re-engaged, because he got out, but then re-engaged. So that was kind of stupid of him. But at the end of the day, like I put it more on me. I called for a, a bad engage, and he was just doing what, you know, you're supposed to do is listen to your jungle's callouts. So, yeah. Uh, here, the way I kind of look at it is like, okay, we're ahead. And I know we're ahead, but we're also, even though we're ahead, we're actually behind. Because their early game's a little bit better than ours because they have the Zin Zhao. Um, they have a Thresh. Um, and then also the thing is, I messed up my clear. So... By the way I ganked mid, it completely messed up my clear. So as you see right now, I'm kind of just sitting idle for like quite a few seconds. If I would have done my clear correctly, uh, things would have been spawning as the dragon came, came up. And I would have actually been able to clear it as I went to the dragon. Um, this is a risky play right here. Because like all my team isn't here. But I feel like kind of confident in myself. I know that um, I'm a really good jungler, so I'm kind of like expecting myself to hit the snipe, which, um, and get the clear, which I did get the jungler, or I mean, I did get the, the dragon, so it worked out, but that was a riskier play than not, especially since my uh, team wasn't there. What I should have done is, um, waited until my team showed up, but luckily they focused everything on me, and by focusing everything on me, um, my team was able to clear up everything and I got the main thing secured, the dragon. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice that I did earlier is I was pinging the uh, rift right away. A lot of times what will happen, so let me break down this fight. So we got all those kills, but we chased as well. Kids get really focused on getting kills a lot of times, which isn't always the greatest thing. We didn't, so it's great that we got those kills, but what would have been better is after those kills got away, instead of chasing, we let them go. And if we would have pushed out mid lane and had somebody rotate towards the rift, we could have had rift basically dead by the time I got here, had the uh, mid lane pushed. So Yon wouldn't be pushing the lane right now. And then we would have been able to uh, drop the rift a lot sooner. Okay, so that's kind of like, how my thought process was going into that fight. Um, now here, the reason why I'm going bot versus going top is once again, risk reward. I could rotate up here, but as you see, even if I rotate the exact same time as Janna, I'm not getting there in time to save his life. He's dead anyways. There's, there's nothing I could do, all right? Now the Janna rotating mid actually isn't terrible because we do want to have somebody mid to help at least defend the tower um but it's it's still kind of pointless okay so i get up there now it's a half dead fizz versus two health full health thresh zin Zhao, and a janna maybe we can win the fight maybe we can't probably not because kennen is mid and the uh trist is top and our adc is still all the way back at base so I decide to go bot and I ping the bot because this is actually the smart play. A lot of times people think, you know, the correct play is always help the team. The correct play is not always help the team. Even though you're a jungler and a lot of times junglers, they always focus. There's nothing we gain by me going that way. By me going that way, we stall a fight. Maybe we get a kill. Maybe we don't. 
Maybe I save one teammate's life, maybe not. But by going bot, this is what happens right here. So they're all fighting, just exactly like I said they were. We got the dragon, we got the rift, and now we get first tower, okay? The gold difference is now pretty huge. That gives us a map. Look at the gold difference, okay? Ma objectives over kills. Objectives over kills. This this is the thought process. So now, like, what I'm thinking again right now is I actually really just want to clear my jungle. That's, that's really why I do. I want to continue to scale. I want to keep getting stronger in everything. Um, let me actually talk about my build for a second. So I actually messed up my build here. So I I always uh, what the hell is the thing? Um, Luden's Echo, yeah, Luden's Echo, and then I like to go straight into Orb. Then I like to go into uh, the Mask, Leandries, um, and then after Leandries, uh, I like to go into Rylai's Crystal Scepter. So uh, Echo, Mask, and the orb um, off of the green book and then into Leandries. The reason why you build that way is it gives you the maximum burn plus the slow. Um, this is if you're a Morgana main. Uh, that's how I do it, but I actually messed up. I, uh, I got the, the mask first. And the, the main reason why I, I probably got the mask first is they don't really have a ton of healing on their team. Um, so the mask is actually better if there's no healing. So, I mean, realistically, it is the right play uh, going mask because they don't have a ton of healing. So the mask will do more damage than the orb will. Uh, but typically, if their team has healing, you always go orb first. Um, so here, yeah, I'm just looking to cover mid as well. Our top lane fighting for no reason. So this is something you see a lot of times kids are they're literally just fighting for for no reason so the only benefit of this fight up here is it probably does secure the top tower but realistically you know we could probably get that top tower or almost get it without sacrificing a death um because what we're doing is we're giving a kill to a trist or cannon potential possibly um which become basically two hyper carries late game. Um, because this team, this game is on, it's the other thing you have to realize, this game's on a timer. We can't win this game if it gets too late because they have a Kennen, because they have a Trist, and because they have a Yon. They have three hyper carries late game who will absolutely shred our team no matter what we do. Like, they'll just demolish us. So, looking at this, there isn't really anything I can do too much so i'm gonna focus on clearing my farm and hoping my team runs away um my team isn't gonna run away unfortunately so i'm gonna go in and try and change the fight but as you see i throw a absolutely horrific binding now they start to overstay so we might be able to get something here but yeah they run away and once again, I'm trying to get everyone back. I never wanted to fight this fight anyways. Um, and luckily, my team finally leaves. Sometimes, just going in and, like, giving a presence with your team and then pinging them away will help them realize, okay, like, hey, this isn't really a winnable fight. <laughs> so, what our, our objectives right now, once again, uh, this was... <laughs> that was funny. That was a uh, a misclick. I was trying to, uh, <laughs> I think I was trying to hit um, a ping or something or a text. I can't remember what I was trying to do, and I accidentally hit my flash. I was uh, pretty frustrated with that, especially because that was a pretty pivotal time. Uh, pivotal time. Well, uh, I knew I knew we were about to have a big fight here. Luckily. Um, Luckily, the flash didn't come back to haunt me. Here, I, I, I actually kind of messed up. Here, I oh my, I remember this. I literally couldn't believe the cannon lived. Um, that Jin got super greedy too. But we get the tower, which is exactly what we wanted. But if I would have had the flash there, we actually would have killed the cannon. 
Um, I wanted to push further. My team didn't, so I backed up. Um, here, once again, I'm just focusing on, like, keep scaling, get farm, uh, get big, as strong as we can. Good, the Fizz, the fizz is actually running away. Uh, I'm actually rotating towards the Fizz and not mid, because I already see a bunch of people mid. See, this was just, that was just great teamwork by me and the Fizz. The Fizz gets unlucky. He just so happened to back on a ward. Oh. Uh, right there, if I would have been paying attention to the map better, we probably could have gotten in. But here, I want to back off. Now, the reason why I wanted to back off, even though we probably win that fight, is objectives are coming up. And the way I look at it is I would much rather uh, back and get the objectives um, then have a team fight and possibly lose the team fight. Here, once again, like I said, if, if you clear correctly, your objectives will be, or your um, Groms and stuff will be up as you get ready to go in, which allows me to rank up as I go. Ally slain. Okay, so since we had a death, my first thought is, dang, can we even go for Dragon anymore because we had a death? Now, I still think we can. And the reason why I think we can is because Yon is top, okay? And then I'm looking who died. Set died. Well, Set's the weakest person on our team. Set's two and six, okay? Their, um, you know, strongest person is their jungler and Kennen. But it's a 4v5, and my mid lane's pretty strong. I'm pretty strong. My Janna is doing really well at um, blocking. And they're, basically, their whole thing is they're engaged, but my Janna is going to disengage. And so I'm thinking that we can possibly win a fight here. It's like, I want to do pokes and fights. That's what I want to do because Yone is not there. So that's kind of like my thought process. The Fizz is thinking the same thing. I'm trying to get in range of this Fizz and shield him. Got the shield on him finally. But see, we're literally just poking. And then, oh, my, I think I do kill him here. I can't remember. Yep, I did kill him. So, this Janna was super good. This Janna made the game so much easier, like I said. So, like I said, we have a protect comp. They have a attack comp. The Janna, man, the Janna was such a great pick here. She, she was literally just owning them. Once again, I spell shield myself. Boom, take it. This is why I knew Morgana was such a good pick this game, because of the spell shield. Once again, they're all in attack, but we have so much disengage, we, we just win fights over and over again. Here, once again, I'm immediately ta uh, pinging, once we're all safe, somebody get to the rift right away so it doesn't reset. My team, unfortunately, isn't listening, but what the smart thing to do would have been to head to Rift, get at least an auto attack on it so it resets, which the Jin did, which was great. Fortunately, our Fizz died. If the Fizz would have just rotated over right away, we would have actually had a uh, lane priority rather than the, um, the enemy team, and the Fizz actually would have lived. Here, I wanted to steal the blue, um, which I got really greedy here. I killed myself, and for some dumb reason, I went back in. Uh, this was just this was just a boneheaded play by me, you know. I I don't know. As soon as I saw them there, I should have backed up right away. My team did really good at trying to fix my mistake and everything, but like honestly, like I was the one who uh, threw that fight a big time. So, we have the Rift. What I like to do when I have the Rift is uh, this. So, a lot of times people just like to drop it wherever they see an opening, which is great. But if I have the ability, my idea is always get the Rift on this side of the map uh, to try and take out this inhibitor tower first. 
Now, the reason why, as a jungler, like, I like to have the rift at all times because I like to dictate how the map goes, and I personally believe that my macro and my micro is better than my teammates, and I know what to do and how to uh, dictate the game better and the flow of the game. So my thought process of having on this side, if I get on this side and I can get these towers down, then they have super minions coming, and they can't contest this. That's my thought process. Now, that's the dream. It's not always what will happen, but that if I have my ideal situation, I break this side of the map first, and I always try to drop my rifts on this side of the map to try and break this lane first so they can't contest Elder or the Last Dragon, which a lot of times is fire. So, okay. Here we have a big situation. To me, a lot of teams would look at this like, oh no, what are you doing? I'm super mad. Like, but me, I'm like super excited in this situation. And the reason is, is one, I have my Fizz top, okay? And it's me and Janna here with our Jin and our tank. So I know me and Janna can keep them off. And then with my poke damage of my S2 and my Rylai's Crystal Scepter, we'll be able to get plenty of damage down especially because we're ahead while well, fizz is able to split push so my thought process here is let's poke do damage if we get a good all-in fight we can go in because i have everything up except my um my smite which would be up in just eight seconds so i basically have everything up so i feel like we're in a really good situation they're in no position to contest the fizz and then if we get in a bad fight we can easily disengage uh because of the champions that we have as well. So, as you see, I'm trying to start a fight here. I got my slow out. I accidentally spell shield the wrong person there, like an idiot. And so they're all going for him, so I'm like, okay, fine, we're gonna all go for Yon. So, notice my, okay, hold on. So, notice my pathing here. I went this way, because my other team was going this way. Um, this was a good pathing. It could have been better, though. What I should have done is actually gone up this way right here. I should have gone up this way around. Now, the reason why this is better pathing, because he's already going to be here. He can't cut through here. Um, by me going this way, we're having two people attack the same axis of entry. But if I would have went up this way, what would have happened is I would have seen him if he flashed over, and I could cut him off if he tries to go this way. Or if he continues to go straight, I can always just keep walking over as well. And then I also have this guy as a backup if anybody tries to come up on me. So that was kind of like a little fail. Um, and I, I, he gets away because of that. But if I would have been top, like I, if I would have gone the top way, I actually would have been able to contest the Thresh. And he would not have been able to uh, get away. But because I went the wrong way, um, it changed the whole fight. But, like, as you can see, like, literally, the whole fight would have been different. We actually would have got a kill there. If I would have just went this way, I would have been able to contest the Thresh, so that way he couldn't have lanterned him. If he would have gone this way, Jin was already right here. Jin could have easily just stepped back and killed him if he went that way. And then the Thresh couldn't have lanterned him. But because I, I made the initial correct call by going this way, right here, through this section, but then I messed up when I went this way, instead of this way if i would but the, the, see, the thing is everyone gets so kill hungry because i got kill hungry i was like oh i'm gonna kill him i'm gonna go this way but if i was thinking about secure i would have gone this way and then if he came this way right up through this i would have been there to catch him if he went this way i could have continued going this way and i also could have stopped the thresh from being able to lantern him and if i would have just trust my teammate Jin, who is right here he could have killed him if he went this way we literally had everything gone or uh, correct but this is the high elo stuff that and like high uh, micro and macro stuff that kids don't think about they're just like oh there's nothing i could have done if i just, just walked this way it would have changed everything the pathing path right here just through this section right here changes that whole fight instead we get a kill we possibly we kill him maybe the thresh overextends and now we get a free baron or who knows like so many things could have changed um, if I just would have played the, the game correctly. Uh, but I messed up. So here, I, I'm once again, I'm super confident. Um, I don't know why he... Enemy 
the set did that, like our set was pretty bad. Here, once again, like I always like to do it, but this was a perfect example. The Fizz went in super hard, uh, definitely harder than he should, but by going so hard, he opened up the map for us and um, made it pretty easy for us to just do it. Now we basically kind of have the game like on a pretty hard lockdown. And then once again, like as you can kind of see, like when you have um, so much good disengage against a hard engaged team comp, it's so hard for them to do anything. We can just push them back. We can spell shield all their stuff. Um, we wanted to end here, but you know, I start ping, hey, like, let's get the hell out of here. This is not a good fight. The Janna was right, man. The Janna was so good. This Janna was so stinking good. Um, she was definitely a big reason why we won this game. This Janna was really, really good. Uh, the gym was really good too, but the Janna, man, the Janna, um, the Janna really made this game. Um, so like my thought process is now like, Hey, this game's won. We don't really have to do much other than just not throw the game. Uh, we just need to get a good team fight in game over. I have a couple ideas on how we can close this game out. So my idea is now of how to close this game out. Since the game's kind of broken, I'm less worried about closing this side of the map out because if they get a fire dragon, it's not the end of the world because we have two dragons now. My next thought process is this guy right here. So my thoughts are, okay, we can end the game by getting Baron or we can end the game by getting this tower right here. All right. Um, we know Trist was top lane and their jungler is right there. So we kind of know they're out of position. If my team is smart, they would have immediately rotated this way towards me. Um, which I believe the Jin does, but like I said, our set wasn't the greatest. Fizz is in a pretty good position. He's getting this bottom lane pushed out. Our top lane is already pushed. Um, but those are my thought process. So we can either end this game by closing out this top tower, getting Baron, or just getting another good team fight. But those are like my thought process. This is how we end the game. A lot of people don't ever ask themselves, how do we actually end this game? Right here, I don't know why the Janna pushed up like that. She got pretty lucky that nobody else was there. Um, our Jin goes top. Not really sure why our Jin went top. Uh, especially since Jin's like one of our strongest champs um, this game. I'm not sure why he went top because he's basically just giving up a free kill and shut down. Luckily, we got the kill, but definitely really risky as well so they do a bad engage on us we clean everything up and that's that's just basically the game right there uh typically the gen going top is a really really bad move um yon should never lose to a gen 1v1 but our gen was 11 3 and 5 um but typically, it's a horrible move. The Jin probably did it because he knows he's fed his all get out. So he's like, hey, there's no way uh, anyone's going to kill me. I can basically kill anyone. Uh, but typically, that's actually a really bad move. It would have been better. Uh, like, maybe the set went top. If he had teleport. But yeah, that's basically like how like my mindset goes throughout that game. And then there you go. There's our stats. Like I said, everyone in this game, Masters, GM, uh, Grandmaster. I can't remember if anyone in here is ex-challenger or not. Uh, damage report. So as you see, super high damage. Just basically by everyone. I mean, our support did more damage than our, our set, which is insane. The Janna was so good, man. The Janna was probably re the real MVP of that game, honestly. She was really, really good. Uh, but I knew this comp would work and the Janna was just such a good pick because it gave us disengage for all their engage. Like I could basically spell shield any of the hard engage from the Kennen or the Thresh or the Zin Zhao. The Janna could back up anything that I missed out on. Um, you know, with the, the Jin traps, that helps the slow down. Um, and then... The set can knock away the uh, either carry if they get too hard on, like hard engaged on one of our guys. 
Uh, so it was just, it was a great team comp, but most people would look at this and say, oh, dang, like the other team, their team's way stronger late. They're going to win. And they would have won late game. And like, especially cause like our fizz and our set were kind of feeding pretty hard. Like the fizz was still really strong, but he was feeding pretty hard uh, along with the set. But Jana and me knew our role. We did what we were supposed to do. We kept the gin alive. And so the game really worked because me and Jana played how we were supposed to. We basically played poke and disengage and allowed um, our carries to fight. If we would have just tried to go all in and fight them, we would have just lost hardcore. Um, so, yeah. But that's a basic little jungle guide for you guys. Uh, kind of giving an understanding on like how to gank, how to rotate around the map, thought processes on ganking. Um, I'll do more. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.